forward. The next speaker for today is Mr. Salman Ali Bittani, who has joined us online. Uh, he is a lecturer at the School of Politics and International Relations, Qaid Azam University, Islamabad. Currently, he is pursuing his PhD at School of International Relations and Public Affairs at Fudan University, Shanghai, China. I now invite him to speak on the topic, Cultural Cooperation as a Tool for Soft, a soft Power Projection, a Case Study of China and Pakistan. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, worthy director, Dr. Jaspal, worthy guest, Mr. Khalid Saab, uh, some of my colleagues, I can see Mr. Fahim, great to see you. And dear students, uh, a very warm uh, early noon from uh, Shanghai, China. It's a great pleasure to talk to you after a long time in, in this uh, hall. Uh, I'll begin my talk by uh, by outlining my um, presentation, uh, Pakistan and China have forged a venerable history. Uh, its bilateral relations have been encompassing on diverse realms. Uh, the advent of the Belt and Road Initiative has notably cemented their bond, attra attracting considerable discourse within the public domain. Notwithstanding the extensive literature that has been pursued on economic and strategic dimensions, there has been scant uh, dedication towards the interplay of cultural diplomacy as I see. So my presentation is structured into three sections. Firstly, I'll explain the conceptual nuances of soft power as an instrument of, for projecting influence. Then I'll talk about China's approach. My candid analysis as well, being here as, as a student and living here for some time. And then finally, I'll also touch upon the Pakistan-China uh, case study of uh, this uh, complex uh, dynamic and its interplay. We all know, we are students of international politics, that soft power emanates from nations' intrinsic values, its institutional framework, and the foreign policy bestowing upon legitimacy to its influence on the global stage. Public diplomacy serves as the primary instrument for harnessing a nation's soft power, rendering the state a pivotal player in its projection. Soft power draws upon intangible reservoirs such as the allure of nation's culture, its values, whose efficacy hinges upon its harmonization with the cultural and ethical fabric of the intended recipients. Cultural relations encompasses dynamic and reciprocal interchanges between the societies, encompassing the government to uh, government to government organizations and non-governmental entities as well. These interactions cultivate active participation, meaningful dialogue, equitable exchange, establishment of trust. Cultural collaboration has been a potential to amplify a nation's soft power by promoting its cultural legacy and cherished principles, forging, forging intercultural connections and nurturing amicable, amicable bonds between these cumulative nations. The triumph of cultural cooperation initiates in the contingent upon the capacity to foster a shared comprehension and reverence among the partic participating societies. Cultural diplomacy as an integral public diplomacy serves as an instrumental mechanism for exercising soft power. Its purpose lies in the exhibition of propagation of a nation's cultural identity on the international stage with overarching objective of cultivating enduring relationships with foreign populaces. The strategic approach engenders a conducive environment for the nation of effectively that engage with other states in the realm of global affairs. In a sense, cultural diplomacy functions as conduit for nations to project a favorable image and fosters goodwill through cultural exchange and interactions. Joseph Nye, who has introduced the scholarship on Power emphasizes that the efficacy of cultural diplomacy as soft power instrument hinges on the capacity to comprehend and appreciate perspective of others. Echoing this very sentiment, another scholar, Nicholas Kull, asserts that cultural diplomacy encompassed with the realm of diplomacy encompasses a nation's endeavors to tactically navigate its international environment by showcasing its cultural assets and achievements abroad or facilitating cross-cultural exchanges. If I talk about China now, as it ascends to greater prominence in 21st century, it becomes imperative for this nation to capitalize on its reservoir of soft power resources. 
Conceptually, China has been analyzing the idea of short power projection domestically undergoing fierce debate. There have been different voices from different corners of Chinese academia, intelligentsia, emphasizing on different, adopting different approaches towards uh, uh, soft power projections. It is important to understand the Western notion in, in politics and IR are not taken as it is in China. Generally, the conception that we have about the um, different notions of IR, that is power, power projection, hard power, soft power, combination of both, the, the, the conception that is given by Nye, this, this type of analysis is understood in China, but not taken as a standard. China has its own uh, mechanism of academic construction. It has its own mechanism of civilizational transformation, translation of any uh, philosophy into action, into an impactful policy. So we need to keep this in mind. On, if we talk about on ground, moving to political disparities, apprehension stemming from a uh, certain global order, uh, there has been a resistance to change, but China has also been encountering substantial negative bias in Western world. By actively cultivating soft power, China possesses the potential to augment its allure among other nations and foreign audiences. It fosters trust-based relationship with states and incentivizes them to heed its perspectives. In changing global dynamics, the translation of soft power projection at instrumental level is in the far. It is imperative for China to harness the tool of public diplomacy to promote its significant reservoir of soft power. China regards its rich traditional culture encompassing Confucianism, Taoism, and other classical school of thought as the most valuable wellspring of soft power. Additionally, it also endeavors in the developmental assistance as in the case of COVID, uh, recent COVID vaccine diplomacy around the world confidence building measures, resolution of regional and international disputes, as was mentioned earlier, economic engagement and cultural outreach. It collectively contribute to the projection of its soft power. China has augmented its public diplomacy budget and has been extending humanitarian aid, education, aid, educational services, development assistance to numerous nations. It has stoutly tied its assistance to policy objectives, including the promotion of its companies, cultivation of political actors and alleviation of concerns surrounding its economic ascent. Chinese scholarship believe that Chinese public diplomacy has centered on five primary objectives. Disseminating the Chinese government's official statements. One, constructing a positive image of the state, countering distorted foreign reports, improving the international environment surrounding China, influencing the policy decision of foreign nations, an area that necessitates attention and improvement within China's international communication efforts. Beside the endeavors enlisted above, China since follows a monumental model of development, it wants to replicate that in soft power domain as well. It also believes, it is also believed that China has yet to fully grasp the concept of power manifesting in several actions and uh, orientations. We, we, we can count some of them, like equating national strength with international perceptions rather than recognizing the significance of cultural factors. We can also talk about prioritizing international status over the cultivation of a positive global image, placing excessive emphasis on economic expansion at the expense of cultural promotion in international engagements, demonstrating undue modesty regarding the advancement of China's interest on the world stage, Presuming the respect for China's history and civilization will inherently translate into soft power on itself. These misconceptions may impede China's efficacy in effectively building soft power within the realm of international affairs. Now I'll, I'll come to my uh, third part, that is the uh, China-Pakistan case study. This relationship is often being described by, by uh, rhetorics and evocative narratives such as higher than Himalayas and deeper than ocean. This enduring partnership, partnership has encompassed comprehensive state-to-state -state political interactions, including diplomatic, defense, and economic operation. However, the cultural dimension of the relationship has not been as robust as the others are, primarily due to structural and anthropological factors China recognized the importance of investing in soft power after it was articulated as a policy perspective during the 17th Congress under uh, President Hu Jintao's leadership. 
Previously, the interaction primarily took place at institutional level, limiting the efforts to establish people-to-people -people connections until the, bent, until the Belt and Road Initiative came. In recent years, there has been exponential growth in cultural exchanges across various levels. The significant role laid by Confucius Institute in cultural cooperation is well known. Presently, approximately, uh, there are about 25,000 students that are estimated uh, to be in different institutions who are learning Chinese language, which is an important tool of cultural communication. Yet the realm of cultural relations is closely intertwined with political economy, and it would not be an overstatement here to say that in case of China and Pakistan, the social bonds that give rise to cultural ties are an extension of economic linkages between the two societies. In many instances, the awareness and understanding of each other's cultures are driven by structural necessities rather than an organic process. While social changes often originate from such interactions, advancing them at institutional level requires state regulations. Achieving a more meaningful level of cultural relations that can serve as a tool for soft power projection requires a combination of organic evolution and state-driven mechanism. An illustration of that can be observed from a perspective. Um, here I want to share a personal uh, experience uh, in, in China where whenever you introduce yourself as a Pakistani, uh, there is a very uh, common use term terminology in language. Uh, you can find that on street, in office, at school, in, in universities, wherever you meet, uh, there is this term of Bathye. Bathye is a Chinese term which means iron brother. So that's a very strong cultural communication symbol that has been introduced in Chinese society and that is uh, regarded only to Pakistan. This term Bathye or Bathye is only uh, uh, related to interaction between Pakistan. So whenever we talk to our Chinese friends here or teachers or anyone, the, the interaction not only include pleasantries, but also this expression of uh, uh, these two states between iron, being iron brothers. And uh, it is very common that whenever you meet someone, you exchange pleasantries, you say ni hao, and the next expression is bathiye, when you tell them that you are from Pakistan. That example I wanted to share here, uh, share here. Uh, the term is frequently used on streets in social gatherings, and uh, uh, this reflects the cultural affinity that is fostered by economic ties between the two countries. Currently, there are student, student exchange programs that constitute the largest form of cultural exchange. Pakistani students here represents the third largest uh, student group following South Korea and Malaysia. Uh, with the pre-pandemic estimate of around 28,000 students who were studying at the length and breadth of China. Uh, the number of Chinese students, however, uh, is less, but nonetheless, it's still significant. There are around 1,000 Chinese students who are studying uh, in different universities across Pakistan. Uh, they are learning Pakistani languages and they're known, known by, about Pakistani culture as well. Uh, the Another segment of uh, cultural exchange involves frequent travel of businessmen between the two countries. Um, however, apart from people-to-people -people exchange, most projects in cultural real are at the moment state-sponsored. Nevertheless, there is ample room for further cooperation between China and Pakistan in this domain. Uh, the announcement of uh, CPAC initially generated tremendous enthusiasm. We saw joint film ventures, music videos, memorable advertisements. And when I was preparing for this talk, I just... Uh, was was looking into some videos on YouTube and I found this very uh, significant video, uh, Ashan Masala ad. So, but after that, I couldn't find anything else. So there was this initial fervor and uh, enthusiasm, but slowly it died down due to many reasons, many domestic reasons, uh, uh, pandemic and other reasons. But I hope so that uh, uh, both the countries and these uh, structural connection in both the countries will catch up soon. The frequency and momentum of such uh, initiative that, uh, that diminished over time uh, must catch up again. And uh, I hope so there is some stability in our country so that we can concentrate on these very important uh, um, projection tools. Both China and Pakistan face significant challenge, uh, challenges in wielding soft power through cultural cooperation. 
China endeavors are characterized by unique uh, Chinese characteristics. Uh, as a student, I have observed there, uh, observed here that uh, the conception of politics, conception of sociology, anthropology, economics, everything in China has to go through a process and everything has to have Chinese characteristics. So soft power projection also uh, fundamentally, technically needs that and it is still going through that part of Chinese characteristics. Um, and at the same time, it is also adhering to this uh, daunting challenge of uh, Western propaganda, which is very robust, uh, very effective, I would say, as well. So most of the time, China is doing firefighting while projecting uh, its soft power image. Uh, there is this China threat theory that has been created in, in Western uh, academia, academic and media circles. So China is dealing with that. Uh, while if we talk about ourselves, Pakistan, I think at this moment of time, we lack even to tackle the uh, negative image, let alone building a soft power, uh, which we need to work on definitely. There are several obstacles that are uh, hindering these cultural ties, the cultural differences, uh, the political tensions, the restored resource constraints. Uh, I think at the end of uh, my talk, I will just say that addressing these challenges will be crucial for China and Pakistan to leverage cultural cooperation effectively in the pursuit of soft power objectives. Uh, thank you for listening to me.